would like to invite um, uh, our next speaker, Professor Rao, to kindly come from Berlin, to kindly come to talk about uh, the management of uh, pentacil neoplasms. <coughs> or adenocarcinoma of uh, the um, appendix. So this is usually what happens. We have an appendicitis, a patient with, uh, has harm in his uh, right uh, lower abdomen and he underwent uh, appendectomy as usual and then after a while when the pathology came it has uh, been an appendix cancer or a mucosal or a neoplasm uh, uh, from the appendix. Now what should we do then? You can see here already that there are some nodules over here. This means it seems to be mucinous and if you are happy uh, to get such a photo, you can decide whether uh, you have to go further or you can wait for these patients. So anyhow, we will get through these stories. For the primary neoplasma of appendiceal cancer, you have a lot of uh, um, uh, cancers. This uh, adenocarcinoma, the low-grade adenomucinous leo, uh, neoplasia, which is uh, pseudomyxoma, you have high-grade, you have mucinous adenocarcinoma, you have gaplet ring cell carcinomas, this all is uh, accounted to appendiceal cancer. You also have these neuroendocrine uh, tumors which we squid here, but as you can see also uh, during the time uh, these kind of cancer is raising a little bit. We per perhaps we are more aware about it. And if you have these uh, special kinds of cancer of the, appendix, of the appendix, you see that you have different kind of prognosis in these kind of cancers. So the signet ring ca cell cancer also in appendix has the worst prognosis, but the mucinous and the carcinoid cancers do quite well, so probably we can do something for them. <coughs> Risk evaluation. Well, we saw in literature that in this uh, series is 25 patients and they, they, they looked very carefully to this uh, um, mucinous uh, neoplasia of the uh, appendix and they, they saw that there was a perforated mucinous neoplasia but without having seen any um, 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 mucinous uh, in the uh, abdominal wall, so without pseudomyxoma. They also have disseminated free acellular um, mucinous, but um, at least it was not a pseudomyxoma. This was in nine. So the, the majority was that you have a perforated uh, neoplasm, but without pseudomyxoma. Then you also have uh, patients with unperforated uh, neoplasia, uh, and also without free mucinous. So these, this is the um, uh, characteristic of these 25 patients. And out of them, 12 patients in a range of 61 months developed a pseudomyxoma peritoni. And um, this was the, the, the surgical uh, treatment for these patients was only possible anymore in 64%. So, uh, there has to be something which is used to the um, yeah to us as being a doctor and don't look for our patients. <coughs> and anyhow, the perforated uh, neoplasty, if you compare this without perforation, you see that 65 percent, the majority, will develop a pseudomyxoma in these cases. So uh, it is only 25 patients. But what, what you can learn is that you have that the, that the possibility to occur uh, for pseudomyxoma can least up 10 years. So you have to follow up these kind of patients with a mucinous um, uh, neoplasia of the appendix. And you should uh, systematically uh, follow up this with, uh, with uh, MRI or CT scans. And um, 
patients with perforated uh, neoplasia are on a higher risk to develop uh, pseudomyxoma. We have another series of patients with up to 1,500 patients and what they uh, saw is that the mucinous epithelial neoplasia was nearly half of the patients and they had in 20% a low-grade adenomucinous neoplasia and adenocarcinoma in 30%. But what they also saw is that the median evolution time from appendiceal neoplasia to uh, low-grade adenomucinous neoplasia is something around two years. So it's not that, uh, that it appears at the second. What is also learned by the literature in a series of over 2,000 uh, patients is that if you know that there is a neoplasia, and you operate these patients in between the first, the first half year, the results, the long time survival is significantly better than if you look uh, up for later surgical treatment. So this is something we have to uh, get in our mind. But what also is that, the, the, what is important is the histology about this kind of uh, um, uh, disease. Of course, uh, the pseudomyxoma grows beyond the organ, uh, the, the organ origin, so it, it's on the peritoneal surface, and it, if you doesn't treat it, it will <coughs> lead to death, not at a sudden, but in 10 years or 15 years, uh, these patients will die. <coughs> it does not metastasize to lymph nodes or to other organs. I haven't seen it yet. And uh, various classifications hindering us to compare our data with other centers. So there is quite a very nice um, uh, uh, um, morphology described by McDonald. <coughs> he said he has a type 1 and a type 2. The type 1 is a mucosale uh, which leads the mucus into the appendix and it doesn't go out of the appendix. And there's another type where you also have mucus in the appendix but it goes out and it will lay outside the organs and in the peritoneal surface. And if you give some pathologist the same kind of appendix, they will not come to one on the same decisions. There are lots of decisions with uh, these kind of uh, treatments. So it's quite difficult. It is a rare disease, but it is, it's a difficult disease too. We have new information about gene expressions and we know that we can um, uh, um, uh, order these, these kind of cancer uh, in groups. So we have low-risk appendix cancer, high-risk appendix cancer, and high-risk colorectal cancer. And if you compare this together, you see that the low-risk has the best prognosis compared with the high-risk of appendiceal cancer and compared with colorectal cancer. So there is something um, which differs uh, in these cancer from each other. And there's also literature that uh, stated that we already found some pathways to, um, to see why uh, the cancer cell will produce um, mucinous situation. Perhaps in, in the future we can find some uh, medical treatment which changes um, these pathways that there is not so much mucus because this is killing the patient if not um, removed. So we have a special treatment for this kind of, uh, of, of cancer. And this is this uh, site reductive surgery, which is developed more or less by Paul Sugarbaker. And this includes a very long surgery and uh, a surgery where you have to be in the upper abdomen, behind the liver, in the small pelvis, so in, in the totally abdomen, where you have to look for mucinus and have to remove the peritoneal uh, surface uh, properly. Sometimes you also have to remove organs like splenectomy or uh, colorectal resection uh, in some cases. 
to get a, a proper resection of the tumor because if you are nearly if you reach a CCR0 resection which means a nearly complete tumor resection these patients has a 10 year survival rate of about 50% so this is something but if you are not able uh, to see this or to do this this is terrible Anyhow, this includes a lot of big kind of surgery and lasted uh, sometimes until 14 hours, 10 hours uh, in the middle. So this is such a case where you can see the mucinous situation all around the liver uh, between the small bowel and in the small pelvis. And if you see here, if you open the abdomen, these mucinous will come out <coughs> and <coughs> We have in this uh, patient 17 liters mucinus removed and um, after uh, a long time of surgery then we, had, <coughs> we could uh, uh, reach nearly cytoreductive surgery uh, which was totally. Anyhow, you also have to look for omphalectomy because usually these patients get upfront uh, laparoscopy somewhere and <clears throat> so in these uh, stitches are always some small cells which uh, grew again so you have to, to remove this then and uh, go to peritonectomy in total you see here the omentum which is infiltrated also here the gallbladder are surrounded with mucinous situation so if you get the right layer you can uh, just uh, depict everything also the ligamentum terrace you have to to go through the um, uh, 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 portal hepatic you have to open it you have to go down to to really get all these layers we heard in the morning so the surgery for this pseudomyxoma is the surgery of the layers at least you also have to get along the pancreatic uh, distal part, have to remove all this, what we just uh, also heard uh, in the morning. So this is what you have to do here to remove um, the, the total layers of the um, abdomen, but also of the small bowel. You see here, uh, these are uh, tumor nodules which you remove in getting the peritoneal surface of the small bowel and remove it totally so you can and you have to do this on both sides uh, to to get a, a good clearing of this kind of uh, situation and also for the rectal part you remove the you, you perform an uh, I always say an extra peritoneal anterior rectal resection because you get the uh, the, uh, the uh, laying from the bladder and uh, behind the bladder you cut the rectal situation so you can remove also these kind of mucinous situation which you will not get out properly uh, in just in pooling it or, or picking it um, in, in, the, in the lower pelvis. <coughs> Well, uh, I told you, uh, complete site reduction uh, surgery in this kind is the major important fact uh, and this makes uh, the surgery very important. <clears throat> if you are not able to do this like here, uh, you have uh, only the bulking surgery. Uh, sometimes you have to do this, but uh, this is not combined with excellent uh, survival. And it is also clear, as I showed you up front, that the uh, deep pump, which means the pseudomyxoma uh, compared with the carcinomatosis, is uh, um, in, another, in another prognostic situation. So we have to follow this up. But anyhow, which is important, even if you, if you treat the carcinomatosis, um, and then you have to get a complete site reduction if you compare with not complete site reductions and lymph node metastasis appear in patients who have um, uh, a carcinomatosis derived from appendiceal cancer. What else should we uh, um, yeah, recommend? Um, there is uh, the situation of how to um, put uh, chemotherapy in the treatment setting of this kind of patients. So uh, for the low-grade cancer or the high-grade cancer of, um, of uh, uh, the appendix, but especially low-grade, 
additional chemotherapy does not seem to help these patients. So we just uh, have to offer them um, a, a good a surgery combined with a hyperthermia uh, uh, chemotherapy. But in patients with high grade, for instance, there could be something uh, um, that influences um, the, um, the overall survival. But in signet ring cell cancer, we will recommend um, uh, chemotherapy in the setting of the treatment of these patients because uh, there we have the impact that this will help. Anyhow, there's a small series of patients because it's a, it's a rare cancer situation. And we also um, know that we put after this kind of cytoreductive surgery the HIPEC, the hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, which leads to something around 60 minutes, some have 90 minutes, some make 30 minutes. In our um, uh, hospital, we perform it with 60 minutes. And we see that um, these uh, will appear an influence of the overall survival in the patient, especially with high-grade uh, uh, cancer, um, if you treat this in the combined uh, situation. But there's also something we have to, to get um, uh, in um, our mind. These are the tumor markers. Usually, we have uh, in, in uh, appendiceal cancer, we have elevated tumor mar markers, which is the CEA. But if you have some who have not elevated, they have the best prognosis. And the patients who have more than three tumor markers elevated, they have the bad prognosis. So you also can, can see a little bit of the prognosis if you uh, follow up the tumor markers. So in summary, we have uh, at least the, 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 the morphology and the differentiation because of, of the um, type 1 and the type 2. Uh, the type 1, um, I think it is also possible to have a strategy to watch and wait if it is a person who has, uh, uh, well, he want to go holiday, he had uh, bought the tickets and uh, want to do a, a, an exam or something like this. I think you, don't, you do not have to push him to come to a hospital and underwent a big surgery. You have the possibility to have a watch or wait procedure, something around six months to ten months, and you have to follow him. Um, and uh, follow up should be MRI every six months or every year in some patients, and you have to follow up the tumor marker CEA at least. And uh, for the type 2, you have to decide and to speak to the patients that uh, cytoreductive surgery and HIPEC is the best procedure for these patients. <coughs> the other thing is that you have to have, if you perform surgery, you have to make a complete cytoreductive surgery <coughs> and uh, induction chemotherapy, I guess, is recommended in high grade, uh, but especially in signet ring cell cancer in these patients. And perhaps what I think is very important that in this kind of surgery you're not alone. Your, the, the, your results are, of course, you have to be a skilled surgeon, but of course you also need a good radiologist, a good anesthesiologist because of the loss of many fluids, 17 liters sometimes. You need uh, to have a, a good pathologist, a good ICU, and a good uh, treatment uh, of the nurses of our patients. I think this is very important to have good results if you have this kind of surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, any questions? I think we've got a question up here. Is there a clear indication for right hemicolectomy in um, PC of pencil origin? Well, if it is a low-grade adenomucinous neoplasia, uh, I think it is not necessary to have a complete uh, hemicolectomy in this patient. Uh, but if you go, if, if, if you undergo cytoreductive surgery and the colon is uh, packed with mucinous, then you have to remove this. Sometimes this is possible without a colectomy. Sometimes you even have to perform uh, a total colectomy with the uh, extra peritoneal anterior resection, and then you have to make an ileorectostomy. Any other questions? 
Uh, may I just ask you one more question? Um, if you have a patient with a perforated appendix and it's a bad uh, histology, say a signet ring or uh, I don't know, carcinoma, but there's no evidence of peritoneal spread at that time, and you know that they're bad outcome patients, is there a role for prophylactically or treating them with high PEC and site reduction surgery in anticipation that they're going to their bad outcome? No, if, if there's no, um, no, we, we do not know that there's any peritoneal metastasis in this kind of patients. I think I will uh, uh, recommend him chemotherapy first and then we have to have a look, uh, a second look uh, after uh, 6 to 12 months. Uh, looking also with the CT scan if there's okay. something else. Okay. And then it is possible to make a laparoscopy and have a look on the PCI. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Uh, this one question for me. Does it matter if uh, the, the mucus in the, yeah, the, the nail cavity is in cells inside or uh, uh, in order to decide what we're going to do? If it's an acellular uh, mucus? This is without sign of perforation on the histology. Uh, it is usually acellular <coughs> mousse, uh, small cells, uh, very less cells. But anyhow, after ten years or after the progression, they will develop uh, um, a, a pseudomyxoma, which is then sometimes difficult to uh, to uh, to treat them surgically. So what I recommend is in some patients, I also have young female, they want to have babies, and so I say, well, at the moment we do not see anything, go ahead, but we have to have a look uh, in every half a year, every year, what happens to you, and, um, and then sometimes after four years, whatever, we have to go for surgery. So you follow them with the screen? You have to follow them, the yeah. And they have to know this. And most surgeons do not know this. Otherwise, you would, you would go ahead and do some reduction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think in the absence of time, we should move to the next question.